Welcome everyone to our Global Leadership Summit. I'm Peggy Polonis, Chair of the Ideagen Athens. And it's my pleasure today to welcome Dr. Tracy Benson, who trains people to think systemically to improve life and living on the planet and in order to achieve one or more of the global goals. Tracy Benson is president of Water System for System Water Center for Systems Thinking. She is a leader in the field. She's an author, an innovator in the field of systemic thinking. She's worked with educational institutions, governments, and corporate sector, the corporate sector, in her role as president of the Water Center for Systems Thinking. Tracy works with people and organizations from all over the world, helping them to develop their capacities to achieve organizational goals and to realize their vision for a better tomorrow. The Water Center for Systems Thinking is committed to ensuring that anyone who has the desire to learn systemic thinking has the opportunity to do so. And as a systems thinker, they're best equipped to solve the world's most pertinent and complex problems kind of like Ideagen, bringing together people who are working on the world's most vexing issues. Welcome, Tracy Benson. Thank you, Peggy. It's just a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for that very kind introduction. It's great having you. And let me just start right off by saying that we know that in order to achieve the sustainable development goals or the global goals, not only, you know, the time that's been set by the United Nations 2030, but at any time before life and living on the planet becomes non-viable, requires a shift in the way we live. And that requires a shift in mindsets. So what exactly is systems thinking and how can this change in mindsets be achieved or developed? Yeah, um, so systems thinking is a term that um, is pretty widely used in a, in a number of different ways. If you if you Google it, it um, you'll find that people say that it's a framework, that it's a um, that it's a, a way of thinking. Um, you will see it um, defined for business, healthcare, science, um, and the environment in slightly different ways. Um, we see systems thinking as a way of understanding the world it, that emphasizes the relationships between the parts, not just the parts in isolation. Um, it, for example, if you were to look at a family as a system and you really wanted to understand that family, you would want to look at the relationships that, the, that parents might have with children, children with one another, also the relationships with extended family. So it's the connections or the relationships between the parts that, that a systems thinker really pays attention to. It's also a language that helps you ask questions and develop an informed curiosity that strives to understand that system, you know, beyond what we experience like on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's also a set of visual tools that helps make your thinking um, visible in a way with mapping and different diagramming. And it really helps people get on the same page in, in sharing their understanding of what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis and also helps with the planning, problem solving, decision making in a very, very visual way. So in terms of mindsets, um, you know, the way we perceive the world is kind of the way we understand the world. And so uh, we refer to mindsets as something called mental models. Mm -hmm. And mental models are kind of like the, the glasses that you wear to see and understand the world are made up of, of everything about your identity, your age, your gender, your culture, your race, your past experiences, your education. So understanding the lenses from which you see the world and, and being aware of that and that people wear different glasses. So um, people's mindsets, being able to share <clears throat> how your understanding has been developed over time and to share that understanding with one another is really part of seeing the big picture of a system. So all of that kind of encompasses, you know, kind of our mental model about what systems thinking is and how it can benefit the process of systems change. It sounds like something that we should all learn how to do. Um, can you, you've worked with organizations, different kinds of organizations. Can you give us an example 
of what that looks like and what is exactly a systems thinking organization? What does that look like? Okay, well, um, we've been doing this for over 30 years and um, everybody on my team is affiliated with, you know, has, has been an educator or has been involved in the education system. So seven, I would say 75% of our work is with education systems from early childhood all the way through to higher ed. And um, so we've got some incredible examples of, um, of, of schools, of education you know, systems that started many, many years ago um, that are still, uh, that where systems thinking is part of their culture. You might not even hear the term, but it is the way they think, it's the way they teach. Um, young children as young as three and four are even using some of the language, you know, like um, looking at connections and looking at consequences of decisions, even the concept of leverage. Uh, and so what we've been able to see is not just the short term effects of a systems thinking approach to education in the classroom and in the organization. We've been able to follow um, our young students through to adulthood and see the impact that this kind of, of teaching and learning has had on their careers and on their in their lives. To us, um, that's, that's what we wanna develop, are really system citizens, that's another term. You know, people who are systems thinkers, who carry that with them in, in everything that they do as they, as they consider their day-to-day -day experiences, consider the world around them, consider their work challenges and life challenges, and be able to navigate those challenges with, um, with the kinds of thinking that really help them develop not just the deep understanding, but a really informed understanding, because it's not just themselves. It's they actively seek other perspectives. They actively change their perspectives to increase their understanding. Um, they, they are curious and they, they inquire in order to get more information um, before they make decisions or as they solve problems. So it's those capabilities to us is, is the huge impact of, that, um, that can be so Im imperative in being able to address large scale, um, local, regional, um, country-based and global challenges for sure. You know, it sounds like anybody can learn at any age to be a systems thinker. And it also sounds like once you develop these, what you call habits, uh, they become sustainable. You can basically carry them over and use them throughout your life in very in different kinds of situations. Can you tell me a little bit about what these habits are? What do they look like? Yeah, so the, we've, um, we've developed, it's actually, you know, one of our pop, most popular resources, um, the Habits of a Systems Thinker. And they are, there's 14 of them. And they're, they're a set of um, cards. And I believe you, you're going to be seeing soon a, a, a link because we have digital versions as well. And these 14 habits have been developed um, based on a lot of research, a lot of um, collaboration with some of the um, most prominent systems thinkers in a variety of fields. Uh, and this resource is, is being currently used um, I think, like, I think it's 112 different uh, learning organizations um, that are education institutions. Um, 29 countries, we're in the process of, of translating them in several languages. I believe um, English, Spanish, and Italian are on our site now. But what they are is that, that they are um, just habits of thinking and doing that can really help people navigate the world. For example, how can I use an understanding of system structure, that is the design of the system, to identify possible leverage actions? And how can I make meaningful connections within and between systems? How can I consider short-term, long-term, and unintended consequences of my actions? And how can I change my perspectives to increase my understanding. And that's more than empathy. That is, am I willing to get in someone else's shoes to be able to see the world like they see it 
even if I disagree with their viewpoint at first, but really understand what they're paying attention to that leads them to their viewpoints. And so again, there's, there's 14 um, uh, mental models, you know, that I had mentioned before is one, considers how mental models affect current reality and the future. Each of our habits have illustrations that are everyday stories. And on the backs of the cards, they, um, they have questions to ask to help you practice that habit so that over time you won't need the, the cards as resources. They're just part of your life, part of how you navigate um, your problem solving and decision making and how you choose to respond to different day-to-day -day situations. You know, and, and, and we have, it sounds like it can be very useful to just life in general, but we have a very tall order to accomplish, to, to attempt to accomplish uh, to the sustainable development goals by the year 2030. Mm -hmm. uh, whether we do by 2030 or not, the point is that at some point this has to happen in order for the planet to continue to be viable, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how can systems thinking help individuals, organizations, communities mm -hmm. accomplish these goals, or get, at least get closer to accomplishing the global goals for sustainability or sustainability in general. Yeah. So here's, here are a couple thoughts. Um, you know, anytime we work with people who have a list of goals, yeah. um, you look at how they're approaching them. And, and oftentimes it's like each goal has some strategies around them. Each goal has a set of actions some you know key performance indicators things that desired outcomes that they want to achieve and yet i seldom see or we seldom see how the goals connect with one another because it's looking at the relationships between those goals that can really inform actions that um that that generate more of a collective approach and and i Maybe I'll just give, can I give you an example of yeah. how some seven and eight year olds have kind of tackled, you know, um, we ha one of our schools, one of our demonstration sites is a project based learning site and a systems thinking um, demo site. And um, so children um, in their project based learning get to decide um, a problem that they'd like to address that's relevant to them. And so this is groups of, of seven and eight-year-olds, they're second and third graders in the U.S. Uh, they had been noticing around their school neighborhood a lot of homeless people, a lot of people that had signs that were asking for food and, um, and asking for help. And they were, they were concerned about this. Now, this school is a, is a government-funded public U.S. school that is located in kind of a high industry manufacturing area of a city. And so they were concerned about this. So they wanted this to be part of their um, project-based learning. And what is unique about um, this, this way of applying systems thinking is that the teachers um, incorporate all of the curricular standards into these, into these pr learning projects that students design. So it's not a separate thing. It is actually part of the day-to-day -day school where reading, writing, math, science, all of those curricular standards are built into the project that the students design. So, so they started studying food insecurity and, um, and they did a lot of research. They used their systems thinking habits and questions and mapping tools. And um, they, they did field trips to the community food bank and they decided that, that um, you could give people who are hungry food, but if you could teach people or help people learn how to grow their own food and possibly access transportation to be able to uh, access places where food was available, and also look at the economy of gaining a job or money in order to buy food. I mean, they looked at all of those different parts of the system, the economics, the transportation, um, food and agriculture. So at the school, they grew a garden. They had a garden. They kept chickens. And then they um, had a composting factor. So they learned so much in being able to. Now, this garden has been 
this food garden and the weekend um, farmers markets that they have um, have been around for years and years and years. It's part of their culture. But then the students said, well, why can't we bring this food into our own cafeteria? Um, because it would be fun to eat our own food during the school day. And then they realized that there were government, um, there were government policies. So they had to apply to ensure that their food was licensed in order to be able to be used. So they learned the government aspect of, of the procedures in being able to gain approval. So in looking at the global sustainable goals, they were had their toe dipped in so many different ones around one project. And, and systems thinking really helped them make those connections. So I know it's a little bit of a long story, but yet um, I think it's a good example of, of making those connections is super important. Yes, yeah, very, very important example. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and nowadays, one of the, just when I go, I'm going on to another topic uh, related, though, because we're all talking in education about innovation and, and corporate, the corporate world and so on and so forth. Can, how is systems thinking? How can, what, how is it important for innovation? Well, um, so, so innovation really comes when, um, when people are, Want to do things differently, um, and I think about so our 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 um, namesake, the namesake of our organization, Jim Jim and Faith Waters, our namesakes. It's not H two O Water Center. It's really a family founded um, uh, effort. He said that you know it's really important sometimes when people need to learn how to fall out of love of their favorite way of doing. <laughs> so if you see that you're working really hard on something and putting a lot of resources and efforts and the needle is not moving, then it really is time to think about things in different ways, which fuels the whole innovation effort. And what, what we see happening is that there's so much innovation happening right now in our world. Our world is changing so rapidly with technology and, and uh, connectivity around uh, that people can connect across the goal, uh, across the world in, in so easily, just like we're talking today, that a lot of traditional organizations haven't been able to adapt as quickly. And so organizations like education and government. And so how can we help those organizations have that innovative mindset to be able to increase their ability to, to, um, to be adaptive and to be creative and to really be systems thinkers because systems are perfectly designed to get the outcomes that they get. So if we're not happy with those outcomes, then it's time to do things in a different way. And innovation really has a, an important role in that. And it sounds like they, it's not superficial. The change is not superficial, but it really goes down deep. And that's why then it becomes sustainable. Yes, exactly. And just can you tell us, you, you've written a book, The Habit Forming Guide to Becoming a Systems Thinker. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I actually have a copy of it right here. I keep it at you know. my desk. And um, so we wrote this book. Um, to, to help the everyday person, you know, person, no matter their educational background, no matter where they were from, where, what background you're coming to, um, to help bring real stories into um, uh, the connection with, with developing as a systems thinker. So the book is organized around some real common systems that pretty much everybody experiences. Your personal well-being system, your school system, which could be anything that you're learning about, your community system, your family system, and so on. So though all of this, the stories and examples that help bring and teach the habits of a systems thinker and apply some of the tools to those everyday stories is how the book is organized. And so there's a lot of reflection questions. Um, it is a doing book, so it's not just a reading book. You know, the, um, it, you can create, um, it's almost like a, your own learning portfolio using the book. And we've also taken much of the context of that book and put it online in one on our learning platform. It's called the Thinking Tools Studio, which is where you find those those uh, digital habits cards. And the Thinking Tools Studio has much of the content of the book 
and the opportunity, again, to use it as your own learning portfolio. You can reflect and respond to some of the, the questions that are in each of the learning modules, and the site will keep your questions. You can even upload pictures of maps that you draw as practice so that you can save them and refer to them. Um, so the Thinking Tool Studio is right now being used by close to 7,000 people from around the world. Wow. Um, higher ed classes, many higher ed classes are using it, especially when we shifted to, um, to lockdown because of the pandemic and shifted to only digital learning. The Thinking Tool Studio became very, very popular and increased in use. So um, it's something that we offer as a nonprofit organization for free so that everybody and anybody can become a systems thinker. That's fantastic. Um, it sounds like systems thinking and accomplishing the global goal sh needs to go hand in hand. Any uh, final thoughts, anything you want to end a uh, uh, final thought towards our audience? No, I'm just, um, just I, we're here to help. So if anybody, you know, is interested in, um, in learning more, I mean, I'm trying to represent three decades of work in a very short interview. There's just so many examples. Um, you know, we're, we're working in, in healthcare now. We're working with a medical, edu medical schools in, um, in the training of doctors, public health of, uh, professionals, um, and also other organizations, a lot of government agencies um, in the US. Even the Department of Defense has contacted us and so, um, and, and also working, there's some incredible work being done in a number of countries where we have been, we've visited, we've really helped them build their capacity. It's not about us going in and making change. It's about getting, giving people the support and the help so they see um, and discover the own wisdom that's in their space and just give them the tools and the ways of thinking to help. Um, to help leverage that, to help capitalize that so that they can achieve their desired results and deliver benefits to, um, to all um, people that live in their areas and in their countries and in regions. So it is about delivering benefits. Very, very important work. Uh, Tracy Benson, thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to more conversations with you. On thank you, Peggy. Thank you so much. Really appreciate this opportunity.